This program is a presentation of UCTV for educational and non-commercial use only. UCLA is a university with unlimited possibilities for students that desire world-class academics and research. Unmatched diversity, incredible cultural and social opportunities, successful alumni and career networking, first-class campus facilities, plus America's top intercollegiate sports teams. Located in Westwood, just a few miles from the Pacific Ocean, UCLA's one square mile campus is surrounded by famous cities such as Bel Air, Beverly Hills, Brentwood, and Santa Monica. Hi everybody and welcome to another edition of UCLA Bruin Talk. How's your summer going? Mine's going great. With Naomi Manea, I'm Dave Marcus. We are thrilled to have you with us. A very interesting show for you. We'll get to it in just a moment. Before we take a look at this week's guest, let's take a look at the upcoming events. It is sort of a homecoming for our first guest on Bruin Talk. She played soccer here at UCLA for four years, and she recently served as one of the co-hosts of UCLA Bruin Talk. Now we've got her on the other side of the table. We welcome Courtney Casso to the Bruin Talk. Thank Courtney, you, Dave. your role has changed quite a bit. You are recently the director of the UCLA Varsity Club. Tell us what that's all about. I'm so excited to be back in the Bruin family, first of all, but yes, I am the new director of the Bruin Varsity Club, and what the Bruin Varsity Club is, is it's a remarkable group of a very diverse group of former student athletes here, and to be eligible, all you needed to do was to participate in a sport and earn a letter for a varsity sport, which is an NCAA sport, for one season, and what our goal is is to recognize and honor our athletes and all the time that you put in while you were here um, and then what UCLA gave to you and it's really about keeping the Bruin family strong. Um, one of our biggest things is you're not just a Bruin for four years, you're a Bruin for life and we really have to bridge any gap or disconnect there would be with alums and get them back to support our current athletes because as an athlete it's so important to see that the people who came before you are supporting you and it, it really inspires our athletes and so we provide them um, a, a plethora of opportunities for our alums to socially connect with our athletes to network um, that's one of the things we're doing this year is we want to create a really strong network of alums and athletes and again it's really about the Bruin family and supporting each other and the athletic department is really a microcosm of the entire university so what is successful for us in athletics really benefits the entire school and that's what we're all about. I can imagine that as director you have a lot to do. What are your principal and main roles as director of Varsity Club? Yeah, there's a lot, um, but it's, it's such a fun job. I'm so honored. Um, I am new to this position, so one of, one of our biggest events, um, we throw three quarterly events, quarterly, uh, not the summer quarter, but uh, fall, winter, and spring for our alums and to get back involved and we like to center those events around events happening here athletically to get our alums back uh, supporting. So 
Right now we're working on our big football tailgate, a homecoming tailgate for all our athletes, and we're hoping to have a couple thousand people there and really just show everyone at the Rose Bowl how strong of a group we are. Um, so I'm working on that, and we've got our Hall of Fame, our 2010 Hall of Fame inductees. Uh, we've got a ceremony for them, and they'll be out at a football game. And, and then really on the, the really base level, it's connecting with our alums and showing them that they are important because they really are. They are the reason why we're able to sustain the best collegiate athletics program in the country. I know one of the things you've learned in the brief time since you became director is that a lot of the alums have organized their own little groups. They're out there, but they've never had kind of a central rallying point. Exactly. I mean, that's what I, I need to connect everyone because the Bruin pride, it's strong. And it's strong within these groups. We've got alums from the first teams here and recently graduated alums and so we're, we're connecting those groups like you said. I mean we've got guys from Red Sanders years football that they get together every year and they're so proud and they support the team and it's so wonderful to see. And then we've got guys like Bill Bennett in our athletic program who uh, work with Eddie Sheldrake to get our basketball alums and now that we've got Tyus Edney on staff as a new hire it's, it's I hate overusing the word family, but it's so important to keep this Bruin family strong and to sustain our program. As an alum, you used to play soccer here, actually, as part of the athletic program. Any advice to the current student athletes here at UCLA? Oh, yeah. That's another, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's, a, that's another big part of my job is I need to educate our athletes prior to graduating on what opportunities there are for them as they go into the real world. Because we do an amazing job of taking care of our athletes while they're here, providing um, academic support because they are students first. And that's really our entire philosophy. You're students first, then we want you to do really well. But when you graduate, you're not really soccer anymore. You're, you're an athlete. You're part of that bigger group. And you know, the real world is scary. Um, you may be an English major like I was and not know exactly what you want to do. So one of the things I really want to do when working with Ashley Armstrong and our life skills people is getting alums that are in, say, the financial field or the legal field or journalism and connecting them with our athletes to provide advice and to say, hey, this opportunity is out there for you. And maybe when you're done, contact me because I know what it meant to be a Bruin athlete and that's the kind of person I want to hire because you're, you're so well prepared to go out and handle anything. I mean, you're thrown into this world of academia and athletics and you've got to do it on your own. You've got help, but you're only as successful as you want to be. So uh, yeah, I've got to start educating our, our kids on uh, what's out there for them and, and what we can provide to them and to honor what they've given to us. Well, Courtney, you had a distinguished career at UCLA. Then you weren't uh, sitting by idly. You went out, you got a law degree. You mm -hmm. learned words like plethora. That's pretty <laughs> impressive. Uh, how great trying is it, to impress you, Dave. <laughs> how great does it feel to come back wearing blue and gold again? Yeah, it's, I feel a little, like it's a little cheesy, but it's an honor. It's, it's home for me. Um, you know, leaving, leaving the nest as a senior and coming to UCLA, even though it wasn't far from my hometown, it was scary. It was a little bit scary, but it's so welcoming here that you really do start to feel like this is your home. Um, I got to know a lot of the staff here, which I think is really important for our athletes, to connect with who is running your department. Yes, our athletes are important, but it's everyone else behind the scenes that make us the best program in the country. Um, so it's, uh, it's phenomenal to be back home. I see a lot of familiar faces, and now I get to you know, be the old girl on the block and give some advice to these youngins who I see like, okay, maybe try it this way. And, don't, you know, learn from my mistakes or my very few mistakes, <laughs> none of course. Um, so it's, it's amazing to be back. I'm sure the advice is really appreciated. UCLA is your home, as you call it. So what attracted you to UCLA in the first place? <laughs> well, I, I was raised in a Bruin family. So growing up, um, I started playing soccer when I was four and I just was obsessed with sports and loved soccer and I knew that I really wanted to play in college. Uh, my dad went to UCLA, we're huge Bruin fans, so from about the day that I knew college was what it was, I knew I wanted to be a Bruin, wanted to go to UCLA. 
So I really tailored my entire athletic career to getting in front of the proper people for UCLA. Um, you know, I had backup options just in case maybe I wasn't good enough because this is the best program in the country. But uh, I, I made my connections. I worked really hard in school also because I knew you don't just get into UCLA being a good athlete. Uh, you, that's one small part of it. <laughs> so I made sure to just work my tail off until I got here. And then uh, I signed an early national letter of intent and committed early because the minute I knew they wanted me, I was in. I was in. There was no other place for me. So, and it made my dad so proud. That was pretty cool. UCLA soccer has been so successful. Joe Ellis has done a wonderful Amazing. job since mm -hmm. taking over as a head coach. Of course, she's coaching on the national level as well yeah. and here at UCLA. Let's ask you to put on your expert commentator's hat for a second. Bruins have had great success. What do you see coming up in the f season that's just about to get going? I see a national title. Honestly, they've been knocking on the door. Um, Jill is an amazing coach, but she's an amazing recruiter. She really gets you to believe in her philosophy, in her program. She's a, she's a no-nonsense coach, but she's very approachable. She's a, she's a lot of mom on the field, um, which a lot of you know, 18, 19-year-old freshmen, they, they need that kind of guidance. Um, and, and Sydney LaRue, I'm such a huge fan. She is such a phenomenal offensive threat. She uh, played with Jill recently um, in the U-20 World Cup. And had a great summer. Had an amazing summer. Um, Zakia Bywaters, a lot of, I did the radio broadcast of our soccer, so I'm, I'm noticing a lot of these younger players are stepping up and taking senior leadership roles even in their sophomore, junior year. And um, they, I, I really just see them all coming together and I know they're going to get to the Final Four, and I know that this year, it's their year. So that's my prediction here. Looking I back, want all the credit for it. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back at your personal athletic career here, what were some of your favorite memories? Um, beating SC, always, always. Winning the Pac-10 title, um, oh my gosh, I believe that was my freshman and sophomore year. But we, uh, beating SC is always amazing, and it's something we look forward to. I have so many good memories, though. I mean, we got to be ranked. Um, we never made it to the Final Four when I was here. Um, the program has just grown consistently. But being ranked number four in the nation or number seven is, is just so, it makes you so proud to know that you're part of that. Um, and I wasn't a star by any means. I was supporting my girls who were going out there and, and doing it. And it was just amazing to be a part of it. And, and then the, the relationships that I created here were, uh, They'll never go away. They'll stay with me forever. Now you're in the varsity club as the mm -hmm. director with all the different sports. Right. And you've really had to expand your horizons and get to know athletes from all of the different UCLA programs. What's been the most interesting part of that process? Learning. Just, for example, rowing. I, don't, I didn't know prior to uh, being back on campus here a lot of like the, the details and the minutia of what goes on with like scoring and how the events are run. And, so uh, for me, it's always, I'm always learning about new, new athletes, who are our stars here, who are our, who are our new coaches, what are the, what's their philosophy, what are they doing. So uh, it's been really neat to see, and, and specifically working with alums, it's been really neat to see what people in various sports have done after. And are they still involved with their sports somehow? And you know, now they're a doctor and they're working on former athletes or whatever it may be. It's just. It's neat to unify everybody. And that's one of the things I really think is important is there are certain athletic programs um, where you really stick with your team. That's not the case here at UCLA. When you're an athlete here, it's really encouraged to know your other, uh, the other athletes. And I think that's so important because when you leave here, like I said, you're not just soccer. Now you're part of this big family. And it's, it's hugely important for personally, but for your career, just to, to know who, uh, who your teammates are and who your fellow athletes are. For those athletes that may be out there watching this show who don't know about the Varsity Club, how do they get a hold of you? They can get a hold of me, but we're on the website. If you go to our website, um, there's a Bruin Varsity Club tab. You can Google Bruin Varsity Club or Bing or whatever you want to use. Um, coming onto campus, um, I'm willing to take meetings with any alums because it's, it's my job. It's, I need to hear their ideas, I'd like to talk to them. So uh, website's the best way, uclabruins.com, and then go to Bruin Varsity Club. 
Courtney, always a pleasure. It was great Thank having you. you sitting here in this seat. Now it's great having you across Much the table. Much less pressure. I like it. I, it's good. It's Best good. of luck as the director Thank of the UCLA so Varsity Club. Thank you. And we'll be right back with more UCLA Bruin Talk after this brief public service announcement. A trophy can be made just about anywhere. But there's one place where champions are made. UCLA, champions meet here. Welcome back to Bruin Talk. Before we meet our guest, let's take a look at the Athlete of the Week. This week, we honor Vanessa Zamaripa of the women's gymnastic team as our Student Athlete of the Week. Vanessa scored high enough in recent competition in Florida to qualify for two further competitions. She recently finished seventh in the CoverGirl Classic, which she used as a tune-up for the upcoming 2010 Visa National Championships. She was a leader for her team in claiming UCLA's sixth women's gymnastics NCAA title and holds individual titles in vault and all around, as well as the Pac-10 Gymnast of the Year Award. Congratulations, Vanessa, and good luck to the rest of the team on your upcoming season. If you would like additional information about UCLA athletics, please visit www.uclabruins.com. And another great way of keeping in touch with UCLA athletics and everything that's happening on the UCLA campus is an institution. The Daily Bruin has been around for a long, long time, keeping the Westwood community advised and informed. And we're very happy to have Farzad Mashoud the editor-in-chief of the Daily Bruin joining us on Bruin Talk. You spent three years as the sports editor. Now you're the editor in charge of the whole paper. That's right. What a different role that's going to be. Yeah. I mean, well, it was one year as sports editor, um, two years as a writer. Uh, but yeah, it's certainly, it's certainly a big change um, working uh, with a lot more departments and working with a lot more media uh, than I normally do. And I've definitely learned a lot in the first you know, few months in the new office. The Daily Bruin made a big change last year. It's always been a print media that's available all over Westwood and West LA, but you went to an online first model. That's right. Tell us about that. Sure. So the previous editor in chief, Aline Chekmejian, um, she shifted our model to an online first production cycle. And so we oriented our story content, our procedures, everything to uh, breaking news online rather than waiting for the print paper. Um, at first, you know, it was always, it's tough, obviously, it's a culture change, um, but it's something that we're adapting to, and it's something that newspapers all over the world are adapting to, um, and we're, we're getting there. Um, it was, you know, sports is actually one of the first sections to have done it, and one of the probably most important sections to adapt to an online first cycle. Um, so, you know, instead of waiting until Monday to cover a football game on Saturday, uh, we wrap it Saturday later, you know, a couple minutes after the game. And, you know, a couple, a couple weeks into the season, we were beating the LA Times and getting their stories out. Well, I know, and, and of course, the women's basketball program, which I do the play-by-play -play for, I mean, the, the Brantley was on the phone with Nikki Caldwell literally five minutes after the game ended, and uh, it was always nice to see those stories get posted very timely. That's right, yeah, Brantley Watson, he's, he's our women's basketball beat writer, um, and he, yeah, he was, he's really good at that. Um, and we tweet during games, we post stories immediately when they're over, and it's really just an effort to serve our readership as best we can. As far as that, journalism has changed a lot, obviously, in the electronic era. Tell us about your interest in journalism and how you got involved first as a writer and reporter and, and now as an editor. Mm -hmm. um, well, you know, it's, it's, it's funny how I got started. It was really just like a thing to do on the side, you know. And before you know it, I'm the sports editor. And before you know that, I'm the editor-in-chief. Um, but yeah, it's really, it's very fun to be at a challenging field um, and adapting what we need to do for the changes in the, in the field of journalism. What are your main roles as editor? Um, really moving the production process along as it needs to, helping us make deadline. Uh, that's, always, that's always a tough one, and my staff knows what I mean. Um, and also you know, being there as support for the staff in any way I can, uh, filling in for editors uh, when, they can't, when they can't come in, any, any type of editing stories that needs to happen, posting things on the website, uh, any of like the dirty work of, of you know, working our computers or anything, uh, sometimes that falls to me too. 
Well, there's something reassuring. I mean, the, it, it, it's a big print paper. There's a lot of spots on campus. Tell us about the circulation of the Daily Bruin. There's about it's 10,000 circulation on Monday through Thursday and 5,000 on Friday. It's not as many people are on campus on Friday. During the summer, we only publish once a week on Mondays. Um, and we also have a quarterly lifestyle magazine called Prime Magazine, um, which is, you know, it's also all over the campus. It's usually out for a couple of days um, and people see it. It usually comes out later in the quarter. Um, and yeah, our readership on campus is pretty tight, but also in the Westwood community, you know. Uh, you've probably seen them. They have the new stands in Westwood um, off campus as well. The uh, sports position in particular has had some LA notables go through it. Steve Hartman, who's a radio and TV personality in LA, was a sports editor at Daily Bruin. Our own Michael Sondheimer, who's now an yeah. associate athletic director, actually got his start in sports and started a great career writing sports for the Daily Bruin. It's been a springboard for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Um, when I got editor-in-chief, Al Skates, the men's volleyball coach, called me because uh, I've covered the men's volleyball team for three years. And he's like, you know, uh, you know, I just wanted to congratulate you. And it's really funny because a lot of people who are at the top of things came through sports. And he, he referenced uh, Michael Sondheimer as well. And yeah, a lot of people have gone through uh, Daily Bruin sports as well as the Daily Bruin. And it's, it's been a really good training ground for journalists. As sports editor, you traveled a lot on the road with teams and you watched home games. What was it like to see the spirit of the UCLA students? Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of my work was in the office and I would see a lot of my staff traveling. And so in that, they would, they would often interact with other uh, students on road trips and also with other reporters. Um, but I wouldn't interact too much with the uh, student section myself. We heard a story that when you were writing sports, you busted up your teeth in a bike accident and That's you right. still showed up for work the next day at the Daily Bruin. That's right. How does one develop that kind of dedication? <laughs> I'm not sure. I was, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a cool story. I was riding my bike and I got in a little accident um, and I lost a couple teeth. So I, I was on my way to interview the women's volleyball team, actually. And I texted James, uh, the sports information director for women's volleyball. I'm like, hey, I got an accident. I can't come today. Sorry. Um, he's like, oh, it's cool. And so, yeah, the, the next day, um, my, the current editor-in-chief at the time, Aline, she's like, okay, you better not come into the office for a couple of days. I'm like, don't worry. And so, yeah, I was there the next day. And, you know, it's, it's really, I love it. I love being in the office. I love being around the staff. One of the interesting, I guess, dichotomies is a university newspaper covering the university's athletic teams. Sometimes there's stuff that's not so positive that you have to report on. Tell us about how hard it is to maintain your journalistic objectivity and still covering the, the school's teams. Right, yeah, it's definitely tough because you, know, you want to be a fan. Um, one of my writers, actually, he always had the unfortunate situation. He would always report on one of the teams when they would lo lose. That's just how it turned out. And the players, they started to dislike him, or they, <laughs> they, thought, they thought he was out to get them. You know? It's just like all the time he would get the losing games. Um, and it's, it's definitely tough to balance it, but you know, we, we make it happen. In the media, LA is a big hot spot. What does it mean for UCLA students, athletes, and writers to be located in Los Angeles? You know, LA is a great place for people to train. Um, not only to be sports journalists, but any sort of journalist. One of, one of my writers last year, he runs a UCLA blog for ESPN now. Um, and, you know, it's, ESPN wouldn't have blogs in every city. They have cities, blogs in LA, they have blogs in Chicago, um, where else, Boston, Dallas. Um, so being in LA really helps doing that. And there's so many more sports opportunities here. During the summer, you have the European soccer teams that come and practice here. You know, right now, Real Madrid's here. Last year, Inter Milan was here. The year before, Chelsea. Um, and you have NBA players come and practice in SAC. We, we did a story about that a couple of years ago. It was actually an award winner. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of people pass through these walls, you know. Tell us about your future plans. You, know, you mentioned that you really almost accidentally got into the <laughs> newspaper business, but is this something you want to pursue as a career? Yeah, you know, I was, I was always hesitant until uh, I really started being editor-in-chief. And the weekend I started being editor-in-chief is the weekend that John Wooden passed away. Um, and that's the weekend that we were doing a lot of coverage and we put together a special commemorative insert for Coach Wooden. And that's, that's when I really saw journalism in action. That's when I really saw storytelling happen and finding sources and breaking news, things like that. And we had a lot of unique stories um, in that insert that really showed me what's so cool about journalism. Breaking news, Twitter, all kinds of things get news to us in an instant, in our phone. 
Tell us about the role of print journalism in the future. There's still something comforting about sitting down with a cup of coffee in the newspaper. What, how do you see the role of print journalism evolving over the years? You know, newspapers are moving in a direction where instead of just tell, breaking news, it's about storytelling. And so a lot of our content, we've been shifting it to more of a storytelling narrative style. Um, and you can see a lot of that in, for example, our John Wooden insert. Or um, Matt Stevens, one of, one of my writers last year, he did a story about uh, this guy who is uh, he's blind and he's a baseball fan. Um, but he, can't, he goes to college baseball games and he likes USC and UCLA baseball. And it was a really cool story following him in his days, uh, going to a game and what it's like for him. And really, that's, that's what a newspaper is about. It's about curling up and reading stories um, with the paper. You spent a lot of time working with the volleyball teams. Do you have any kind of prediction for this year? Oh, man. I haven't, I haven't researched it too well. I know the women's volleyball team, you know, their coach just retired, and they have a new coach, Mike Seeley. Um, but Al Skates has sung his praises. Um, but I, can't, I, don't know, I don't know too much about how well they'll do. The men's volleyball team um, had a, kind of a tough season last year, but uh, they're, they're, getting old, they're getting older. They're getting more mature. And I think they got a good season ahead of them. The women's volleyball team, too. You know, they both usually go to the playoffs, so we'll see how it goes this year. Well, the sleepy summer is just about over, and your job is really going to ramp up soon. Yeah. Farzad Mashoud, thank you for joining us on UCLA Bruin Talk. Best of luck as Thanks the so top much. guy at the paper. Thanks so much. Thank Kay. you. And we want to thank you for joining us once again on UCLA Bruin Talk. We'll be here next time with another great show. For Naomi, I'm Dave. We'll see you then. So long for now.